The root cause is clearly the occupation and the occupation must end. So we call this a perpetual occupation and we say that's the core underlying root cause of ongoing violence, you know, displayed in terms of the forced displacement, the threats of forced dis displacement, demolitions, settlement construction and expansions, settler violence and the blockade of Gaza. And as we all know, this has endured for decades, and there's a sense of despair and hopelessness within the Palestinian population, um, as well as in Israel and the diaspora. As I said earlier, um, we are listening to all stakeholders um, of whatever political point of view or so on. We're disappointed that Israel has uh, not permitted us to, to visit Israel, to see for ourselves, to talk to victims, particularly of the Hamas rocket attacks. It's very important that we have a balanced report reflecting the situation of all victims. Um, you know, I constantly hear murmuring that we're very biased and we only represent the one side, that's uh, anti-Israel side. So I'm, uh, I don't, I cannot understand why they wouldn't let us in and interview appropriate witnesses. We are not looking only at individual events of human rights violations, but we are trying to establish patterns, patterns that are historical, patterns that are, you know, in a way inimical to the, to the occupation that are, uh, that are leading to this constant uh, cycles of, of violence and, and conflict. We are very concerned about this issue of double standards um, and, and now it has sharply come out uh, in the context of, um, of, of the crisis in, in Ukraine uh, and we are very clear that these are, these are double standards and, and, and the international community is rightly appalled in the face of aggression and occupation and has correctly moved to act swiftly and collectively uh, and forcefully to ensure compliance with international law. But in the case of Israel and Palestine, there has been inaction for decades and it continues. We want everyone to take this commission seriously because it's the first time it, has, it can look into political questions, which you can't do under the Human Rights Council uh, regular mandate. And we all are very keen to find solutions. We're not here just to say how bad things are. People on the ground know it's bad. There is um, a possibility in the next couple of years for the first time in a generation um, of new people and new ideas and new openings. Um, I'm not naive, I'm not utopian. I don't say that this window is wide open, but I say that it's open a little bit. And that places a grave responsibility on the international system and individual states to take advantage of what may be a once in a generation opportunity to pressure for change, push for change, um, reopen possibilities that have been locked.